What up guys? Wayne Bennett back here. Um, God, it's been a little minute. Lord knows I've been running and doing a little this and doing a little that. <laughs> but I guess in that time I have been watching and listening and reading and keeping my eyes open to the world um, so that I would have something valuable to say when I saw you guys again. A reminder that if this channel is adding value, please leave a comment, say what's up, please uh, send a like, uh, hit that subscribe button, but only, only if the channel is adding value to your life. Um, to my 18 year old self, today is about music. To my 18 year old self, today is about music, all right? Now, I am a hip hop fan and my God, as an adult, as I've grown older, I've sort of backed away from it. I'm not into it as much as I was, but when I was growing up as a teenager, I mean a real deal hip hop head. So much, so much that I believed hip hop to be to be true. It's stories, it's um you know, it's metaphors, it's it's schemes, it's it's rhythm, you know, that this is um it was true that I adapted a bit of an identity from from listening to so much rap. Um and uh there's a bit of danger in that. And I'll tell you why, I'll explain it in a minute. But to my 18 year old self, music. So I found this incredible quote that I wanted to share that I think is extremely uh, valuable from Confucius, who is, uh, I believe, a, a Chinese philosopher. And the, the quote says this, if one should desire to know whether a kingdom is well governed, if its morals are good or bad, the quality of its music will furnish the answer. I'm going to read it one more time. If one should desire to know whether a kingdom is well governed, if its morals are good or bad, the quality of its music will furnish the answer. So, tell you what I did. I went back to 2010 and I ran all the way to 2014 to, to see what the most popular songs were uh, in those years and to get a bit of uh, what's happening lyrically, what's being said in the lyrics. And then from there to create sort of assessment of, uh, an assessment of, you know, what's being said here? Uh, what, what are we revealing about our, our black community, our, our, uh, our environment through our lyrics, if this is true, all right? Um, so in 2010, the hottest song was No Hands, Waka Flock in and Wale. First verse starts with all that ass in them jeans, Ken Wale beat and Roscoe Ski. In 2011, Drake's I'm on one. All I care about is money in the city that I'm from. I'm gonna sip it till I feel it. I'm gonna smoke it till it's done. I don't really give, give my excuses that I'm young and I'm only getting older. Somebody should have told you I'm on one. From there we go to 2012, Mercy. Lamborghini Mercy, yo chick, she's so thirsty. I'm in that two-seat Lambo with your girl, she trying to jerk me. 2013, uh, Crooked Smile by J. Cole, which is for sure more of a positive hip-hop song. I keep my twisted grill just to show them kids it's real. We ain't picture perfect, but we worth the picture still. I got smart, I got rich, and I got just still. I'm blanking that out. And they all look like my eyebrows thick as hell. <laughs> 2014. Chris Brown, Lil Wayne, loyal. When a rich nigga wants you, and your nigga can't do nothing for you, these O's ain't loyal. These O's ain't loyal. Wow. So there's a lot to unpack there. If I were to look at that, and I were to say, uh, if this quote is true, that if one should desire to know whether a kingdom is well governed, if its morals are good or bad, the quality of its music will furnish the answer. Mm. I think there's a lot to say about what I just read in terms of these lyrics and where it stands sort of morally. And I'm going to be honest, I feel like this is the detriment of a lot of things that are happening in the black community. 
I'm not going to say the music itself because sometimes an art is a reflection of what's happening in that particular community. But I got to be honest that this stuff is feeding, you know, some of the wrong information to to all of us, I think, you know. Um, here's some things that I feel like it, it displays. Number one is that we care more about individual growth than the totality of our communities. And I think that's a problem because um, when we consider our, our Jewish counterparts, for example, uh, they're known to be some of the most wealthy people in the world. And I think that that's directly tied to the way that they govern their families, that there's a system, there's a code, there are unspoken rules in that community that govern it, and that say, all right, in order to attain, you know, happiness and live a life that's full of money and, you know, all the, the other things as well, joy, you know, that there's a, there's a sense of discipline within community, that we don't uh, glorify just one individual, you know, and I feel like black people are sort of, we're guilty of that, right? Like Michael Jordans and LeBrons and Jay-Zs, you know, they're the exception. They're not the majority of our community, you know? So it makes you wonder, like, what are what are the codes, what are un, the, the un, unspoken rules of, of our individual communities, of the majority of our community, not the guys who are just extremely successful because of a skill, you know? Number two, I think this says that uh, uh, we don't understand the importance of money. So much of our rap lyrics are, are about blowing money and throwing it away, that kind of thing. And in our eyes, money is disposable. You know, I make it rain, stuff like that. You know, um, all I care about is money, that kind of thing. Of, of it, it can display a sense of greed. But I think I want to I wanna focus more on the fact that it feels like with us, money is disposable. Right, we go, we'll blow, you know, these rich guys ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars at a strip club. That's money that could have been invested in something. You know, um here's the third thing that I think it shows is that our, our women are disposable. Um and that's a very detrimental thing, and I think it ties into my first point about our our uh you know, supporting the totality of our community. Um the battery on my camera went off. <laughs> Gotta make sure to keep that thing charged. But the final thing that I wanted to say <clears throat> was that I think this ideology, I think this this way of thinking uh, that's oftentimes found in our rap lyrics um, teaches us that our women are disposable. And I think that it is a very a very bad thing. Like it's it's uh, very detrimental to our to our communities um, because I don't think that you can talk black wealth without talking black family. And I think that so much comes from that, that discipline within family. Uh, and, and furthermore, just feeding into the next generation of how they will groom and raise their, their, uh, their, their children. And so when you spew out things like, you know, um, I don't know, you know, these Zane Loyal, stuff like that, and you know, it's sort of, <clears throat> feeding into uh, people's in the black community is feeding us that you know that our women are disposable that we lack commitment that we should not commit to uh to a wife or to a, a spouse that kind of thing that um you know that you want to stay in that era of just being a playboy um and i think that 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 hurts us in a real bit bad way you know what I'm saying a real big way in a real bad way um I mean, it makes us, you know, uh, baby daddies and baby mamas. And I'm, I mean, I'm not talking from no position of, you know, of being elite. I have found myself in a position where I have a baby mom. I have a son. But I don't look at that and go, oh, you know, good job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, in fact, I had to sit with myself to ask, when your intention was to be a husband. How did you end up a baby daddy? You know what I'm saying? And I think we gotta have real conversations about that element of it. You know what I'm saying? About, I'll be honest, I did my homework, I did my research, I went through it and discovered that, man, I was being fed too much by rap. I was listening to this so much and believing that it was true. You know what I'm saying? That women are disposable and I can just do what I want to do. Like, it doesn't work that way, dog. It just does not work that way. If you're intending to talk about development in the community and you're intending to talk about growth as a whole within the black space, I think it's directly correlated 
I mean, there are a number of other things, true. We understand the history. But I'm just saying at this point, the history is the history. What we gonna do moving forward, you know what I'm saying? Like Kanye said one time, like, we shouldn't have no Black History Month. Why don't we have a Black Future Month and talk about what we gonna do moving forward? You know what I'm saying? Identify the places where we're weak and talk about how we're going to be stronger moving forward. You know what I'm saying? And I think that conversation is about our women and not treating them as if they're disposable. That there is something valuable about having partnership. There's something valuable about being committed to something. Like you can never grow when you're all over the place. That's a principle of life, not just in relationships, but anything. Like, you you guys know the people, like, all right, one week they doing real estate. Next week they record music. Then they doing eyelashes. It's like, dog, bro, every week you doing something new. Like, you can't really sit in anything long enough to, to build and watch it grow. And I think the same thing is true in our communities as it relates to wives and commitment. You know that our music is saying that our women are disposable. That they, that they don't have value, that we can just toss them off and on to the next. And that is killing us. It is killing us. As opposed to, you know what? What, back in the, back in the day, right? Like the number one song was like, my girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got sunshine on a cloudy day. You know what I mean? And I'm not suggesting that music has to stay the same. I'm just saying, the music was a reflection of what was happening in that time. You know that there was less of the idea of women being disposable in our communities and more about like appreciating the value of a good woman and how that builds family, that builds the core of our, it's the, it's the, it's the cornerstone of our communities from which we can actually build black wealth. You know what I mean? But what ends up happening is that what? We have all of these homes where things are scattered and women are incentivized by the state for not having a dude in the house. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it just creates a bit of a mess as opposed to like, all right, what if we commit to something? You know what I mean? And what if we build from that position? Man, the sky's the limit. Here's the other thing is that when men are saying that women are disposable, Women then say, well, men, you guys are disposable. So it pits us against each other. And what ends up happening is that don't nobody want to deal with each other. So we end up having this big mess, mess, mess. It becomes the, you know, the building blocks of, of, of disaster, of brokenness, essentially, because men are saying, Y'all ain't no good. You, you're disposable. It's whatever. And so women then say, well, y'all disposable. It's whatever. And nobody believes in commitment. You know what I'm saying? And so to my 18 year old self with this rap stuff, pay attention to what you're feeding yourself, what you're listening to, what's coming through your eyes, because that begins to be the way that you see the world. It creates a lens through which you see the world. So it is imperative to my 18 year old self, Wayne, that you are listening, that you are, uh, that you're guarding your ears, that there is, uh, you know, that you're protecting the things uh, that your ears hear and that your eyes see because it becomes the lens through which you see and understand the world. Um, so much is on my heart today, you guys can see. And these are things just to, to challenge us, everybody to build, you know what I'm saying? It's not about pointing nobody out. It's not about blaming nobody and pointing the finger at nobody. It's about how do we identify where we've gone wrong so that we can make better decisions and build better communities moving forward. I would love for the day where they're like, oh, boy, black folk, boy, they got it together, boy. They got it, they thing is together. These people are learned, they're affluent, they're educated, their values are in the right place. You know what I mean? Like, wow. Imagine that day, you know what I'm saying? I believe in that. So I just wanted to share that guys. Uh, once again, <laughs> leave a comment. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Uh, challenge my brain. I'm into it all. So uh, 
I hope this finds you well. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome, awesome week. And that nothing, nothing but great things are ahead. All right.